guys and happy Wednesday. I am back um, at the main hospital. I have a final few weeks of this rotation and I am definitely happy to be back. Um, I love my new team. Um, the attendant is just such a good teacher and already from the first three days um, at the main hospital I've just learned so much. And then the pathology for the main hospital is way more diverse than the off-site hospital I was at so that always provides for a good learning experience as well. Um, but this team, um, we generally round every day at 9.15 and then typically we're done with rounds at 11.30 and then we're out by 12. So definitely a lot of study, studying time. I get done a lot earlier, which is nice. Um, I have about three more weeks actually inpatient on the floors. The final week we have all to study for the shelf exam. So almost there, almost at the end of the rotation, almost at the end of third year. And today is a pre-call day, so it'll be pretty short, and then tomorrow um, we'll be on call. Alright, just finished up. I actually stayed a little bit longer today because we did have conference, but headed home now. Alright, so after last week's video um, where I talked about applying to away rotations um, for the fall. I got a few questions about pretty much the residency application process, once we apply, how to do a ro away rotations and things uh, regarding that. So today I decided to um, make a video talking about the process of applying. So you apply through a central online um, system called ERAS and that opens up in June, which is coming up in a few weeks. Um, and by this time, you're pretty much done with third year. You've decided what specialty you're gonna go into. Um, and so you get your application together. And really your application consists of um, your step one score, your step two score, letters of recommendation, your personal statement and your CV, which consists of research, extracurricular activities, volunteering, leadership positions, um, things of that nature. So pretty much the first thing you need to do is decide what specialty you're going to apply to. After that, figure out what programs you want to apply to, what part of the country you want to apply to. Um, it could be geographic, it could be maybe you want to just apply to academic programs, community programs, um, county programs. So you make that choice and you come up with your list. So your step one and step two scores, those are set. Those are kind of like the objective markers that programs um, look at applicants with as well as your grades, your clinical grades. Your third and fourth year grades are way more important than your preclinical years, you know, the basic science grades. So it's important to have good clinical uh, grades throughout third year. Um, letters of recommendations are extremely important as well, especially if you're like uh, specializing, let's say like anesthesiology, dermatology, uh, surgical um, so specialty, emergency medicine. You need to have letters specific to those specialties, so attendings in those specialties or group letter in that specialty. And that's where away rotations come into play. Typically you don't do those kind of rotations in third year. Third year you do your core clerkships. In fourth year that's when you can do more of the specialty type of clerkships. So when you go on these away rotations that's how you then receive those letters of recommendation that you use for your application. So it's important to secure a couple of away rotations so you can get those letters in. So now away rotations, when to apply, when to do them, where to do them. Um, you apply the spring of your third year, typically maybe around March or April. Um, and then you do them, you try to do them as early as possible during your fourth year because again, you need those letters of recommendation. So the sooner you can do the away rotation, the sooner you can get the letter and have it submitted into your application. Because uh, the application um, opens up in June and the earliest you can submit is September. So you wanna have things in by September so that the programs can start looking at them and offering you interviews. So as far as where to do your away rotations, um, there's different ways you can look at it. So some recommend doing it geographically. If you know, let's say for example, you want to match in the Southeast, then try to do away rotations in the Southeast because that shows programs that you know you want to stay in that area. 
um if you're interested in a particular program you know you definitely want to match there then try to do an away rotation there essentially it's a month-long interview where this residency program can see what kind of student you are and can see what kind of potential resident that you will be so if you're definitely interested in a particular program try to apply there for an away rotation um with me um i'm interested in staying in the southeast so all my away rotations will be in the southeast um i applied to I think five programs um i got accepted to two of them i'm waiting to hear back from one of them and then um i'll just decide uh it's recommended to do two some students can do more than that but based on the program the third program that i get accepted to i'll then decide which ones i'll end up doing okay so i talked about step scores getting letter recommendations doing away rotations and the next thing is your personal statement um so like it sounds, personal statement is something that's personal that lets the program know a little bit more about you other than the numbers or what they see on your CV. Um, you know, the personal statement lets them know why you're applying to this specific specialty, why you think it's a good fit for you. So again, you want to start working on this, um, you know, early in the spring of your third year. Start at least getting your rough draft started. Um, let a couple trusted people take a look at it, um, you know, your advisors or if you have a writing center at your school. Um, I went ahead and started my first draft early in spring semester. Um, and then I had my sister and my brother edit it. And then I had my um, advisor, my particular specialty that I'm applying to, take a look at it. He gave me some good feedback. And then I feel like now I have my final drafts together. I'm going to have one more meeting um, with my school where we pretty much discuss my entire application. They'll take a look at it again and provide feedback and after that I think it'll pretty much be um, finalized but I'm happy with the way my personal statement um, turned out um, you know I conveyed why I'm a good fit for this particular specialty um, some of the qualities that I had and pretty much what led me to this specialty um, and I know with med school applications coming up as well a lot of pre-meds are getting ready to write their personal statement and submit applications so this is a very important aspect of your application so definitely make sure you don't overlook this um and there is a lot of writing services out there to help you and get another set of eyes on your application um and particularly um one that i've been working with is called motivate md so motivate md is a company that's created by a medical students to pretty much help uh pre-meds in the application process as far as reviewing their primary um, applications their secondary applications and doing essay reviews for their personal statements um, i previously did a video on um, how to write a personal statement where i went into great detail about this company and about the benefits of using um, this editing service so i will leave a link to that above and below you can check that out but i have a discount code for you guys it's wcc20 where you can get 20 percent off any of the packages that they provide um and the editors are medical students and they're students that sit on admissions committees so they they know what these committees are looking for as far as applicants into the programs and so if you need any help in the application process definitely check this out they do multiple reviews um, over your essay and they give great feedback so I'm going to leave a link to that below okay so I talked about step scores your letter recommendations doing away rotations your personal statement and then finally your CV um, your CV encompasses a lot, you know, if you have research experience that's going to go into your CV, um, a lot, some more, more of the competitive specialties are known for like having research as a requirement, some other specialties you don't need research, so it's really just, re um, specialty dependent. And then different organizations that you've been involved in throughout medical school um if you had leadership positions if you were on the e-board um if you particular if you participated in different extracurriculars like if you had different hobbies like i don't know ran marathons or you did photography those little things should go into your cv just as another element and shows that you're not just strictly a medical student but you're able to do other things outside of school as well so really all these elements of your residency application is similar to like applying to medical school all over again but the stakes are <laughs> way more higher at this point because not matching is definitely not what you want um so yeah application season is coming up very soon along with that then comes interview season which is later in the fall and then match day will be in march so a long way to go from now until then but i'm getting the process started and um working on some of the things that i need for my application so if you guys have any more questions about um the application process just leave in the comment section below 
I'm still going through the process myself, so I don't have all the answers, but I'll answer what I know and what I can. Um, and regarding what specialty I'm applying to, uh, I think some of you guys have a good idea, but I'll be um, saying that in a future video, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.